What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to overlay your data onto your track videos. Now it's a pretty simple process. Uh, all you really need is your computer, a lap timer that can output data. Now the lap timer I have is a Moto D Start Next. There are other ones out there that do pretty much the same thing. This is a GPS lap timer, meaning that it takes GPS information, calculates things like your lap time and your speed. They have other ones from other companies and they also have ones that aren't GPS. If you can output data, you can overlay your data onto your video. Now as far as the software I use to overlay the data, I use Race Render 3. They have free software like Dashware I believe is, is free. Uh, I never really got it to work for me as well as I like, so you know, I paid uh, 30 bucks or something like that cost for a Race Render license. Uh, one of the nice things is that the Moto D lap timer talks directly with Race Render, so there's less steps to try to map out like certain pieces of data. It just automatically does it for you. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and jump into the computer. All right, so here we are uh, on my desktop. Now, as you see, I'm running a Mac. RaceFinder does put out a version for PC. So if you have a PC, like most people do, uh, it will work just fine for that. So here we are on a laptop. The first things we want to do is we want to import our data. This is all the lap timer data that's from the Start Next lap timer. And then you also need your track videos. Here I have my, my GoPro videos from a race weekend. So the video that I'm going to be putting together today is actually already out. It is under the Commentate My Races series, you could go find it over here. All right, moving on. And we're gonna open up Race Render. All right, so pretty simple screen. I'm gonna start a new project. Just pick one standard data overlay. And here we could add our data files and our video files. First, I'm gonna add the video file. Since my forward facing view is the main view, I'm gonna add that video. Pop the window says this appears to be part of a multi-file set. Do you want to add the entire set to the project as a joint input? Yes, we do. Now this is pretty important. This file appears to contain embedded GPS. We don't want to use this because we're using our lap timer data. Now cameras like the Hero 5, they have GPS built in so you can actually just pull that and make your own videos like that. It works just fine. Um, but since I'm not running in Hero 5, I'm running Hero 5 sessions and other cameras, I'm going to say no. Add a data file. We're going to find the data file for this corresponding race. I've already found it here. All right, now it's added. And I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to ask us to select the data template. And you can use any of these and adjust it how you like. But I've already actually made a couple of templates myself. And the one that we're going to use is overlay with rear view. This is one I created myself. Open it up. All of this is fine. You could limit your, your gauge cluster to whatever speeds. You know, there's no point in having it all the way high at 260. We're gonna keep it at like about 180 because my, the fastest my bike's ever gone was 172. None of this is important. I don't have like certain other telemetry like tachometer, shift like your indicator, uh, but it doesn't hurt to have those checked. Now, normally if you only have one video and one data, then all you need to do is just synchronize those two files. But since I'm adding another video file, I'm going to add, go find my other video file, which is the rear view, click open. This also is a multi-file set. Yes, we want to add it as a joint input. And here we have is the rear view. Now in my last video, I had this view as well. If you don't have more than one GoPro, you know, it, it's whatever. But um, having a rear view kind of is cool just to see like what's happening behind you as well. Now the next step is to is to synchronize. There's many ways to do it. The way I found easiest is to do side by side. And I'll pull up this window. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna actually synchronize the two videos. And the easiest way to, let's we could go about this is I'm going to go to the first time I cross start finish at the start of the race. So I'm gonna scroll up to that point. All right, so about there. I'm going to actually step forward until I get there and then step back. There it is. All right. And I'm going to place myself right on start finish. I'm going to do, so now that we know where we want to for the reference input, we're going to sync this input to that point. Step back, step back. There's our finish, go back, 
right there. So now these two are synced. So if we were to kind of go back a little bit, we can see that when I start moving at the start of the race, so we can see when I start moving at the start of the race, this file is also moving at about the same rate. All right, now that we got our video files synced up, we're going to synchronize. Yes, we want to save changes. We're going to synchronize our lap timer data. And the best and easiest way to do this, and let's go back to where we cross start finish, is to use this data, synchroniz data synchronization wizard. We're going to select an event. Now, this took a little bit of trial and error, but what I found is that normally, like on the videos, when I cross start finish for the first time in a race, like at the start of the race, it's the second time crossing start finish line because the outlap, they count it. So we're going ahead and gonna do that and sync. I'm gonna step back a little bit and I'm gonna play this just to make sure it's synchronized correctly. So once I start moving here, you should see this dot start moving. There we go. So I say that's pretty good. And we're gonna click okay. This little pop-up just means that that the two files are not like completely matching with each other. The start of the file is a little later or sooner. That's okay. All right, now that that's done, if we were to go to the start, and you can see that the track data is all available right there. Let's go to the start of the race just to make sure we are at the right place. Perfect, so you see, as you see, when I cross our finish, it started a new lap. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I'm already on lap two, but I just started the race. Easy fix. We're gonna find the data file here, double click it, and we're going to go here where it says ignore first lap triggers, and we're gonna ignore the first lap. There we go. So now my first lap is the first lap of the race. I'm gonna play this for a little bit. Just to make sure the data is all it's corresponding. When I accelerate, it accelerates. When I decelerate, it decelerates. So that's looking pretty good. Now, if I want to make some adjustments to any of these, you'll see when I click on this, over here it gets highlighted. And you can change certain attributes of it. You can make it smaller, you can move it around here. You can actually just click and move this if you want to. But I'm gonna move it back. Um, I usually leave these the way they are, uh, but with some of these you can choose your template, you can choose like how you want it to look, what colors they are, that's all up to you. Alright, so I think I'm pretty set already on making this video. Alright, so this video is pretty much synced up. All the laps correspond with what's showing on the video. And hold on. I want to scrub through this whole thing just to make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary. And you can see, like once you get over here, for some reason with this template, I guess, it adds this at the end of it. So we can go ahead and just delete that. Yes, we want to remove speedometer. All right, so I've pretty much removed everything that I didn't want on the screen there. So I'm left with just the data that I wanted there to begin with. And just want to scrub through, make sure everything is right. And it looks good to me. So, at this point, the only thing we have we have left to do is create the video. So, do we want to save the current project? Sure. And save it as 2017-06-RRR. This is a FMRA. Well, this is the Super Sport Grand Corsa. Or Super Stock. I'm not sure which one it is. It's Super Sport, Super Stock. It's essentially the same thing here. All right, and I want to create the video file. I'm going to choose my settings, full high depth. Just make sure all these other settings are correct. We want picture scale quality to be maximum because we always want the best quality. And we're going to click create video file. All right, and that's going to take a while. So 
basically that's all there is to it. Really simple, really easy. The data synchronization wizard is a really handy tool to get you synced really quickly instead of having to like kind of move sliders, you know, just, just a fraction over here, fraction over there. And it adds an extra dimension to your track videos. Gives people an idea how fast you're going, what lap times you're turning. If you want them to know that kind of stuff, I do, why not? And you know, having the track map is also kind of cool to see where you are. At this point, if you've seen my, if you see my commentating my races series, you know, I'll take this video, I'll dump into my main video editor, and I'll record a voiceover of that race. And that's pretty much it. There, there is to it. I could chop the ends off in my normal video editor if I need to, or I could, you know, make any changes that I need to. But normally, I just take the video as it is, just throw a robot on there, um, I throw it into my video editor, record a voiceover, and that's it. I just, you know, add my little bits to it and export the video as it is. So. If you found that helpful, please leave me a thumbs up. If you're new here and found that useful and like to see more of this kind of stuff, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you, if you haven't already. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Ah.